booked a flight the before they clinched. Oh, okay. But it's still potentially up in the air. No, I'm going. Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Now when you use promo code DNVR, new customers can make a $5 NBA money line bet. And if your team wins, you get $200 in free bets. Seriously, that's only with code DNVR, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. I am Patrick Lyons. And I'm Susie Hunter. Happy first snow of the season. And Patrick is wearing sandals and socks and shorts. Like short shorts. I, <laughs> look, I said showing off the gams. I don't know if we want to zoom in on that. Uh, this is family friendly show. I said the entire month of October I would be wearing shorts. We don't we're not actually like allowed to wear shorts in the press box at Coors Field. So all summer. You know, no, look, no one's shedding a tear for us or yeah. for me having to wear pants. But I'm getting, I'm getting back my shorts time. It's not that bad. It's not that bad with the knees out. Oh, my gosh. I am speechless. I'm consistently speechless by you, Patrick. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> look, we, we've got to preview our, our World Series. I know you're going to do that uh, tomorrow uh, yes. with a fantastic show uh, at 5 p.m. But if even if, look, you're not down on the Susie show or you've got some things going on, get down to the bar because you've got something going on. And I want to I want to lead with that because uh, Ooh, I'm very excited. Thank you. For it. Yeah, it's an unauthorized watch party for game one. Legally, we can't say <laughs> an unofficial a watch global, party. a global set set a global set a global baseball games. set oh the, oh the game one of the gbs it's gonna be good i cannot wait yeah, yeah I, it'll be fun come on down there are no specials for that specifically because again this is very unauthorized yes but it'll be fun you'll be there so i, I know it'll obviously be a good time yeah. we'll, we'll preview the the series i've got some crazy fun facts we're gonna look at some of the best world series memes that are already going around patrick uh, curated some memes they're fun they are fun. I do want to get some quick, uh, brief news and notes. Uh, Silver Slugger finalists are out, which, to my knowledge, is the first time this has ever happened. It's just, here are the Silver Slugger Award winners, and that's it. But now, I like that they're giving out half awards for finalists. Yeah. Maybe it's a bit much, because there are like 85 of them uh, that are finalists. But hey, Rocky's got two guys, Brendan Rodgers uh, at second base, and Charlie Blackman at DH, so... That's that's kind of a nice little bone to uh, to throw to uh, to all of MLB teams if you're not the top dog, if you will. You know what? Yeah, I do exactly. I like this because yeah. there's so many guys who you know are maybe just on the cusp of actually getting a silver slugger, but Great it's point. nice to just recognize the greatness all around. The yeah. more, the merrier. That's Great how point. I like to see things. It, it it would be like if you just voted for the All Star game and then only the starters played all nine innings. Yeah. You're like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Great point. That's, well, look, I'm just piggybacking off of what you're saying. Like, you're right. Like, it, it allows other people to get the recognition that they deserve. And so mm -hmm. there you go. That's uh, that's what we've got there. That makes uh, a lot of sense. So congrats to Brendan Rodgers, who is looking to do the gold glove silver slugger thing. I haven't uh, cracked the history books to figure out the last guy to do that. But you haven't? Pretty good shot. It's Nolan Arenado. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe LeMayhew uh, was able to do that. But really, yeah. in the last, like, decade... It's really only been Nolan Arenado that's that's won a Gold Glove, mm -hmm. um, so uh, that'll be cool. That'll be cool to see uh, how that breaks down. But in St. Louis, uh, their general manager spoke with the media. A couple coaching changes for them. Adam Wainwright is uh, going to be coming back in 2023. We kind of discussed that. You know I'm what? We felt he, that way. I'm glad he is coming back because yeah. I think a lot of people were like, "Should we be lumping him in with these like celebrations for Yachty and Albert?" Yeah. So I'm glad. I'm glad he is actually coming back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we kind of had uh, assumed that as much, right? Yeah. Uh, Yachty on Twitter said, uh, I can't believe Wayno said in his press conference that he's glad he'll finally get to try a season without Yachty or Molina dragging him down. <laughs> Unexpected. <laughs> That's kind of fun. That's really funny. Wainwright also said that he and uh, Paul Goldschmidt have been working for weeks on talking star Nolan Arenado <sighs> into returning to St. Louis. He has until five days after the World Series to notify the Cardinals if he is going to opt out of his contract. I know that some of the front office has gone out to California already mm -hmm. to talk with him about that situation. My prediction is he will get more money. So maybe he doesn't necessarily opt out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, within five days of the World Series, they just announced that, you know, he now has like eight more years left, um, you know, at $200 million, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. He's going to get more money. I really would almost be more surprised if he opted out and was essentially out there as a free agent for other teams 
to contact. Mm-hmm. So Cardinals just need to kind of pony up the cash right away. This is a, what a what a fun new layer of chaos to the Nolan Arenado story. This is yeah. Um, I feel like he. I I, feel, I think you are correct in that. It, I I'm also. I think it's unlikely that he opts out because I think right. he has a little more faith in St. Louis to continue to build around yeah. him and the other talent on that team. Yeah, that's true. You know, and there's. And, and I again, think that's the most important thing to him. Yeah, no, for sure. I think getting to the postseason is is just a big element to it. I mean, again, Phillies barely you know, slipped in, but doesn't matter. They're in the postseason and they make a run. So you basically, if you're saying, all right, I got six more years of, of my prime because, hey, I'm a Hall of Fame kind of guy. I want six opportunities in the postseason. I don't think you necessarily can know there, unless you have a dynasty, there, there are no dynasties right now other than the Houston Astros. Mm-hmm. So unless you're going to play for the Houston Astros, you don't necessarily have a better chance to win the World Series with anyone else. Exactly. It's just going to the postseason, and you have a very good shot in, in St. Louis. So that works out. Uh, general manager of the San Diego Padres, A.J. Preller, was asked, uh, what position will we see Tatis Jr. in 2023? <laughs> and he responded, on the field, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired by your own GM? Well, he deserves Love it. it. He deserves it. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> this is very warranted. No, very much so. He's been acting up. He's been a bad boy. <laughs> I mean, they're, they've been talking a lot more about like extending Juan Soto and, and, and building him up as like, oh man, he's really this guy and, and his work ethic, all of this stuff. And kind, yesterday, just for the first time, I'm at, I'm at a 1% threshold. 1% threshold. Padres possibly trading Fernando Tatis Jr. in the next couple seasons. We got a long way to go, mm-hmm. but it planted the seed of like, well, you know what? If you can only have one guy to, to tether yourself to uh, that's is under 24 years old, they might prefer Juan Soto now at this point than Fernando Tatis Jr. So, Well, you uh, know, Fernando Tatis Jr. has already mm. proved himself as not reliable. Yeah, agreed. Injury so, prone a little bit too. Yeah, he, he doesn't have a Hall of Fame resume, whereas Juan Soto, everywhere everywhere you look, you know, first guy to do this before the age of 24, right? Seven mm-hmm. home runs uh, in the postseason, uh, tying Carlos Correa. He, comparisons to Ted Williams Jr., Fernando Tatis. I mean, there's not too many guys you can compare him to. Maybe Troy Tulowitzki. Hey, mm-hmm. that's that's nice, but that's not Ted Williams. So. Yeah. And also, you know, he's just caused a lot of unwanted distractions for the Padres this season, too. I don't think for they sure. liked having that kind of noise in their coverage of, you know, their team when they're trying to make a run to the postseason. So I think, I feel like he's just too much drama for them. Yeah. San Diego's a really chill place. Great point. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. He might have, uh, Tatis Jr. may have taken advantage of that chillness. Too chill. A little bit too much. (laughs) He thought they were too chill. They'll be fine with this. They'll be fine with that. We'll see what happens. Something I am not fine with. And Uh again, this is just more happenstance than anything, but I, I found this to be very interesting. According to Keith Olbermann, and uh, he's, he's a baseball guy, mm-hmm. amongst other things, but he knows his baseball. <laughs> With Michael Brantley on the injured list for the Astros, there will be no African-American players on either World Series rosters. First time since 1950, Jackie Robinson's fourth season. What? What? Yes. That's crazy. That's very crazy. Yeah, we're almost like a happenstance what? a little <laughs> bit, but also like, well, no, come on. We're, we're past that. It's, it's 2022 here. What, what's going on? Oh my gosh, I'm 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 speechless by this right now. Yeah, I I don't necessarily know how to like contextualize it in in, in any way. It, it it could just be you know an odds thing. Like you know what are the odds of something of two teams uh, in this kind of predicament uh, or or in this situation in the World Series that that don't have any African American players on it mm-hmm. playing against each other in the World Series. You know maybe there's like a, a less than one percent chance, but this was this was kind of that makeup. So wow. I found that to be. Uh, Really strange. Here's another one. Uh, of all the players to appear for the Phillies and Astros this season, meaning, again, you played in one game, you're probably going to get a, a World Series ring uh, of some sort. The uh, Tampa Bay Rays and the Boston Red Sox have the most represented from their team. So eight different players who either played for the Rays at some point or the Red Sox at some point are in this World Series, right? Kyle Schwarber, uh, obviously mm-hmm. being uh, one of those guys. Uh, numerous, numerous players. The only team to not have a former player appear on either the Phils or Astros, our Colorado Rockies. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. Speechless again? Are you speechless again? I'm a little speechless. Yeah. I was thinking. I was like, <laughs> That's is crazy. There, I'm like, are there any Rockies connections to this 
World Series? Nope. 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 Is no. that a coincidence? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Look, there's a couple teams that have only like one guy represent, like the Pirates. Um, what? Blake Taylor, I think, uh, with, with the Astros. So, you know, and the Astros have a lot of homegrown guys, so that's going to reduce it. Yeah. But it's still interesting that the number is zero, and it's only for the Colorado Rockies. Ooh. That's crazy. That's crazy. That is. That's really wild. Uh, where, <laughs> what inspired you to do this digging? Were you just like, I need to find out this specific thing, or did this just happen to come upon you? I, I'm kind of a human funnel. So I'm just, uh, or sponge, I'm a funnel made of sponge. And so if anything is out there, I'm gonna, it's gonna funnel into me and, and into this database here, maybe even a spreadsheet, maybe, um, or I'm just gonna absorb it and, I, and I'm gonna have it. So uh, my eyes and ears are always open. Eyes are always enjoying uh, my buddy Gar Rhyness, better known as batting stance guy. Yes, Gar, funny guy. Love. He's a great dude. Gar, amazing. He's got a fantastic book. Check that out of like the greatest batting stances of all time. And he does all of them. Uh, it's amazing. It actually does translate to a book. Uh, he said, this was the first time in the last seven years, the Dodgers either didn't win the World Series, which look, we know they only did that once in 2020, <laughs> or, or they got knocked out of the postseason by the eventual World Series champ. So Padres beat him this year. And Padres are done. So, you 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 know, if you get knocked out, you want to get knocked out by the team that eventually wins the World Series. Yeah. In this case, first time in seven years that uh, a team is going to win the World Series that didn't get through the Dodgers. Thought that was a little interesting. Wow. Uh, this is the... Uh, <laughs> I'm just... We, uh, I'm in absolute awe of these fun facts right now. <laughs> this could be a new segment. Like, let's see if we can get Susie speechless. That's it. Which is a rarity. So look, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna do that segment a lot. It's like you know every other month, I think, perhaps okay. bi monthly, uh, if you will. Um, this is also, and we talked about the uh, the fact that the the Astros and Phillies they finished up uh, against each other in the regular season. I think it was only two games, too, right? Which is kind of weird. No, it had to have been a three game. I think it was only two games. I could be wrong. Let's check. Let's check. I could be wrong. I think. Uh, because I don't, I don't those. quite remember either. I was a little busy in LA at that time. Oh yeah, absolutely. But they, uh, we do know that they, they've uh, played against each other. Yes. Only the sixth time that that's ever happened. I was a little surprised. I thought the number might be a little bit higher. But it's only the sixth time that we've got a World Series matchup that we've already seen in the regular season. Uh, it's actually the first time since 2014. So it's the first time in a while. And as I got to thinking, which I often do, mm -hmm. this will be the last time that will be important. This will be the last year. Because everyone plays everyone. Tell them, Susie. Everyone plays everyone. Everyone plays but, everyone, so this is going to happen forever. But the interesting part, I think what still makes this unusual, is that they ended the regular season playing each other, and it was a three-game set Okay. in Houston. And so did the Phillies win on uh, first game on Monday, and then they lost the next two? Correct. Okay. Um, that's why I had in my head the, the two color blocks the last two games of the season. But yeah, so that's I, I find that to be interesting. So I don't know if the other five times that it's happened where they've played in the regular season if they're if their year ended against each other very good chance that's not the case uh, yeah very good chance that that is not how it so so out. yeah this will be the last time that that we kind of say like oh that's interesting we'll we'll never mention it again no it'll never get mentioned again well R.I.P. you heard it here last folks <laughs> yeah i like that <laughs> you heard it here last but you're uh, you're gonna hear it first down the corner of colfax in york yes. uh, about what's going on in the world of denver sports even college sports as well we've got great coverage of uh the rams up in csu cu boulder uh they play other sports other than football so there are some positive things to come out of uh, yes. come out of those universities again your membership to the dnvr.com is only 50 cents for your first month price breaks when you're down here at the bar 15 percent off of your tab which is huge it probably covers itself even just for a couple visits coming down to the bar over the course of a year if you want an annual membership you get a free shirt anyone Anyone in our entire locker at dnvrlocker.com. Price breaks for the tailgates, uh, the party bus. If you happen to be in London right now, uh, you can go ahead and uh, tap into that access to our members only Discord. Again, only 50 cents for that first month. Uh, you can also get a nice uh, discount when you go over to evaca.tv slash dnvr. Now, when you use code uh, dnvr, uh, instead of paying $25 for your first three months, uh, plus five dollars for the cost of the receiver. It's only going to be fifteen dollars for those first three months, and you might want to get on that immediately because today is the day. Today, today's the day. A hundred invisible threads. 
the Serbia documentary. Oh my gosh, today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. The documentary is coming How out. How fitting, right? We got no Bronco. Broncos are not on Thursday uh, night football. That was last week. So, okay, that's good. No Nuggets. Mm-hmm. No Avs. Rockies did their part in not going deep into the postseason. <laughs> thank and you, so, Rockies. Thank you, Rockies. Thank you. And so Thursday, perfect day. You're like, ah, oh, man, what am I going to watch? You're going to watch 100 Invisible Threads on Ivaca TV, all about what the DNVR Nuggets guys and our super producer, Kale, they were over in uh, Serbia, and they they cobbled together. Not very hard. Cobble isn't the right word because that almost sounds like it's haphazard. But they got some amazing stories no one, no one knows of. Until Stories now. no one's heard. Kale, have you had a chance to watch the whole thing yet? I have seen the whole thing in parts. Mm-hmm. So I haven't watched it all put together, but I have seen the entirety of it mm-hmm. in sections. And it is really, really good. It's something I'm really proud of that we were able to produce. Um, something that a little media company like us has never really taken on before. And it is something that I'm incredibly proud to have been a part of that trip, even if I wasn't that big a part of the actual production of the documentary. So I can't wait for everybody to see it. I'm so proud of you guys. This is amazing. I can't wait to watch it. Kale, look, somebody's got to keep the trains on time at, at the minimum. I know you at least were able to do that and be helpful for that. So that's super important. I was I was helpful when we were there. It's uh, but shout out to Adam and RG. They've put in so much work and uh, Wheatley as well, who nobody knows, another behind the scenes guy. Uh, just putting in the work on this. I'm really excited for everyone to see it. That's awesome. Yeah, Ethan, super pumped up in the chat again. If you happen to be watching live over on our, our YouTube channel, DNVR Sports, uh, hit us up in the comments there. Uh, we'd love to read those things out. And we'd love to, to tip back a couple of the Breck brews, uh, particularly the hometown craft beer of the Denver Broncos. That's right. It's the Broncos Country Pale Ale. Show off that colorful Colorado legacy, which with the uh, Orange Crush logo and 100% Colorado ingredients, everything in state. Leave it there. We love that. This is your go-to for football season. And maybe you're drinking more than normal and not in a celebratory fashion for the Broncos. But nevertheless, <laughs> do it in style and do it with really good taste. With If, if you're going to be miserable, you might as well drink a really good beer. You might as well feel good. Like, hey, I'm supporting local business. I'm helping out DNVR. <laughs> It still ends up being a, a net positive for sure. Uh, check out the beer locator over at breckbrew.com to find a Broncos Country Pale Ale near you. Let's dive into those memes. Let's uh, let's dunk on the Yankees and Padres. They are no longer in it. Susie, did you see a, uh, a gentleman? Uh, maybe he's used the code DNVR on DraftKings Sportsbook to get a good deal. But he got himself a tattoo there on his forearm, plus 550 on DraftKings oh. Sportsbook. For the Yankees to win the World Series this year. This one hurts. This wow. one hurts. Just like a double L right here. It looks cool as heck. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's just weird just seeing like a box with words on your it's inside a, your it's forearm. A, for a tattoo, it's cool. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's only actually cool if that panned out. Yeah. Well, my question is, why do you get this early? What's the point he of doing this? He was committed to his bet. He didn't commit to the bit. He committed to the bet. Like a dummy. I don't. I mean, maybe he got a couple free drinks, you know, uh, at the bars around Yankee Stadium, you know, showing off people that tattoo. But but like double L right here because he lost the bet, and of course his team lost. If he ever comes to the DMVR yeah. bar, I will buy him a beer because I feel really bad for him. Yeah, like, hey, he's supporting us though because he's supporting DraftKings Sportsbook. So you know what? Yes, we won't dunk on him too hard. Also, it does look he does kind of look from this distance uh, like he could be my younger brother. Uh, that's I was going to say he looks like a dude I know too. <laughs> <laughs> I think you uh, just know a lot of white dudes with mustaches right now. You know. That's just very true. That's just that's just the fact. They all look alike to me. <laughs> they do. Uh, these two gents do not look alike at all. Jose Altuve and Aaron Judge. Wonderful word bubble saying, look, if you want to go to the World Series, I can probably get you tickets. Oh. Yeah, because uh, Aaron Judge not going as a player for the New York Yankees. He's going to have to go as a fan. But Altuve will, will hook him up. That's nice. Look, I love the way he looks up to Aaron Judge, though. Very admiringly, yes. We, uh, we, we discussed this on Tuesday, uh, the, the difficulty or kind of the, the trouble with being a fan of a team that expects to win the World Series each and every year. On the back of the New York Post, 
they uh, they had by the way by spelled B U Y with Aaron Judge, of course, who's going to be a free agent. Go ahead and spend some money for him. You also had Edwin Diaz of the Mets wearing uh, Yankees pinstripes, Justin Verlander, as well as Carlos Correa, all guys who can opt out and become free agents. Look at this wishful thinking. Right? Uh, But also these photoshops are hysterical. (laughs) They look great. (laughs) These are hilarious. Yeah, bombers need to spend big. This is the most facial hair. They should have photoshopped the facial hair off of these guys too. Ooh, not bad. To make it actually realistic. That's a great point. I this is like a that. really bad Photoshop. They're so bad. For <laughs> Carlos being, Correa's is the worst, I think. Yeah. For being like a real newspaper that I know employs designers, I don't understand. Yep. Good good wordplay. I do like the wordplay. Like, hey, look, we implore you. You need to start spending money like the Mets. A that sounds crazy. But a plus wordplay, D minus Photoshopping. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. Uh, also, Petco Park, uh, that was quick. Now it is currently a spirit Halloween. This is my story. favorite genre of memes yes. where people, the second a team is eliminated, yes. they slap a spirit Halloween on it. It is very good. And so, you know, if Rockies fans particularly want that one, we don't need the one for Yankee Stadium quite as much. We've already dunked on them. But the Padres, yeah, okay. We'll see. It's not the first time they've had to sell off some of their products when going all in. So we'll see if that happens again. <laughs> Probably not. All right. Astros now. Really good tweet by uh, a an Astros fan, believe it or not, John Boyd. Uh, he's got the uh, certified check mark there. He said, Astros are only pitching so good because their catcher is relaying secret signs <laughs> to the pitcher to tell them what to throw. Shameful. That's he got funny. such crap from Astros fans after that. He's like, God, really? You don't know that this is like an obvious joke and I'm wearing an Astros hat? Right over their head. Totally. Right over their head. Totally. I thought that was very funny. Big L for Astros fans right there. Alex Bregman took this tweet down, but we were able to to capture it. Uh, John Boy selling some uh, AL Championship Houston Astros shirt. This is spicy. (laughs) Very spicy. Bregman says, we borrow merch from Apollo Houston, who they kind of make some shirts there for Astros and Rockets, all the teams in Houston. We buy it from them, not conspiracy theorists. It ends up taking it down. Oh, my God. I can't believe <laughs> I was shook to see Alex Bregman taking shots at John Boy, who was like, that's a brand that is so good for baseball. Like They are yep. so good for baseball. And, uh, okay, yeah, I guess they probably have said some stuff. But, damn. Yep. Albuquerque's own Alex Bregman. That's, <laughs> that's it. right. That's right. Actually, he should have a nickname, ABQ. Alex Bregman, Bregman and then something with a Q quotient i don't know no. his his team can work on that you work i was gonna say you they, workshop no, that can. on your own time they can do that I, I, i'm not workshopping anything for any <laughs> astros guys um Susie, uh that one was spicy this this one is gonna make you feel spicy because jalen hurts qb uh, of the six and oh eagles no. certified houston no, astros fan no no why is he wearing an astros cap uh this has got to be photoshopped i keep seeing this picture i refuse to believe it's real this is so bad for the brand because it's like we where's the tyra banks gift we were rooting for you we were all rooting for you we loved him it's legit now it's uh, mm -mm. no if you're a philly athlete the rule is you have to adopt all of the Philly teams. You have to. And even if you don't, you don't blatantly wear the other team like that. I don't know that I can remember any player doing it in in a moment like this, mm-hmm. like off season stuff. That's sure, not, it's going to happen a little bit. And you're like, well, you know, yeah, Whatever. I wore this cap. Whatever. But no, but right this now is, that you is can't do that. Terrible, terrible you on his part. That. And if the Eagles do not win the Super Bowl, it is his fault. <laughs> On his own, solely. Watch him throw like four touchdowns for 425 yards in the Super Bowl. And they, I, they I just, lose. I, it's, it's his fault, though. I want a formal mm. apology from him. Yeah. Well, um, you're not going to get an apology from the those famous Padres fans, or now infamous Padres fans. Oh. Let's, let's toast the Phillies. This was the exact moment the Phillies clinched the NLCS. <laughs> and we didn't know it. We didn't even know it. That the that's I, what's in, guys. It. We knew it <laughs> the that's what's in boomers that's what they should officially be called the that's what's in that's boomers what's in. the twibs they are the twibs that's what they are yeah they uh they were out but that was the moment we didn't we didn't realize it we you thought, didn't realize it 
Yeah. We, I think the people of Philadelphia realized it. Yeah. Bryce Harper's getting way too much credit for his eighth inning home run there in game five. No, no, no. Was that was the, really those guys. It was those boomers. Um, Rob Torneau of the Inquirer. Really good meme of the Philly fanatic working, uh, working the grill there. Today's special chicken very, cheese steak. We've got the San Diego chicken on there. Very violent. Very good. Very on Pro brand. Philly. It's great. Yeah. Although Philly, the fanatic looking a little uh, tired there. He's no, it's the intensity. He's there's, just like there's really some lunch lady vibes going on for the fanatic. It's like, whoa, cheer up, man. He's not supposed to be working like this. This what, is not in his contract. What, uh, it, what are they going to be serving up? You know, Wagyu beef from Hassel Cattle Company. Is that, is, is this that going to be the big thing? No, uh, it's actually going well. You know, Houston Astros, like, what's the food of the Astros? Like, if you're thinking of the um, theme, maybe the food of the Phillies, beef. maybe it could be the barbecue from Greg Lazinski's barbecue stand at Citizens Bank Park. Okay. Could be that. Could be that. And I mean, there's so much good food at the bank. Chicky and Pete's. Chicky and Pete's. That's my spot. Um, um, you know, we got Federal Donuts, the chicken. That's like my favorite chicken sandwich. I don't know that. The Federal Donuts chicken sandwich. Is it, is the, or is the bun a donut? No. They, what? They have, no? well, it's like, it's a store that, you know, started with donuts. So like, <laughs> but then they branched out to other things. So like they that. make a sandwich. Although how many people a day are pissed that they don't have donuts when they walk I'm, into that place? If they yelp it. If they're from out of town and you type in donuts and you walk into a chicken place, you're going to be a little no, bit No, they bummed. have donuts. Oh, they do? Yeah, okay, they have right. donuts. Excellent. Yeah. I, I'm down with that. Um, we'll get to a donut place in a second. Love this uh, this Top Gun meme. You can be my wingman anytime. Uh, of course, we've got the Iceman, Val Kilmer, and Tom Cruise. Now, the updated version, of course, uh, with Miles Teller there as Rooster with Bryce Harper. Love that new wingman meme. I, I love that Miles Teller is just also at this great moment in his career right now where he just came off a huge movie. Great. And his team is in the World Series. What I do take objection to, he referred to himself as the most famous Phillies fan right now. And I'm like, mm. well, mm. I, to my knowledge, I haven't seen a bigger Phillies fan. There, there may be more famous ones, he, but I don't, I haven't seen them. He, he the might, ballpark. he might be right, but he is getting an awful lot of attention for his Philly fandom nonetheless. So I'm, I'll probably run into him. Uh, hosted, uh, tell me he did a good job on Saturday Night Live. He did a Peyton Manning impersonation there. I that didn't watch this episode. I need to, I, Peyton Manning Season is premiere. my favorite comedian, so I love any impression of him. He crushed the Peyton uh, impersonation, by the way. Oh, he did damn. a great job. And Maverick, just a good old fashioned shoot 'em up movie. It was very good. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I did enjoy that. It was one of the few summer movies. Uh, and then we also have, uh, a wonderful uh, meme, uh, a Drake meme, going back to the Padres. Padres had their rally goose, and, well, uh, the Phillies had their own goose. We have Son of goose. Philly, it was Philly's Rooster. Got, Philly's got a couple of gooses, I guess. They did. Because the I think the Wawa goose is the most important one. That's right. And and Miles Teller, who is the son of goose from the original Top Gun, that's where he got the nickname Rooster. You like that tie-in. But really, the Wawa is, is what's jumping off there. That is very funny. I, th I think Bryce Harper made some comments about there needs to be like, sh sh he, he rolled in Wawa and Schwarber he was, he was He had a whole thing. He was thanking Wawa in yeah, the yeah. post-game press conference. I'm like, yes. That's it. My dude. Yeah, he got coached up nice because I imagine, you know, uh, I would love to see like those outtakes. You know, like when, when uh, actors or actresses are going out for a job and you're like, oh, wow. The, he could, like, Seth Rogen could have been the original, I think, Dwight, maybe, hmm. uh, from The Office. And you see this, like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, no, that might not have worked. I would have loved to have seen, like, uh, his agency peppering him with, like, Philly questions and just seeing, you know, how badly he might have gotten it wrong. But, yeah, Sheets is what's going on. And I love you're like, whoa, we got to coach you up, dude. Don't say sheets. <laughs> Do not say sheets. This is Wawa country. Uh, it's also Crisco country because the execs, they're just burning 20 50 $100 bills because they're making some money off of uh, what they lather up. Yeah, they don't actually put butter on the poles, right? Is it No, is it I, th I believe it is. They, I think they do use Crisco. Yeah, that's probably cheaper. Yeah. That's probably much cheaper. Uh, I love the, uh, the metal ceremony meme. Oh, my gosh. I love this. Just the, like making so much money you got the metal ceremony meme which which this this one is a personal attack on me well but in in actuality the the phillies are in the world series so they are on the top gets the medal takes a bite of it yeah it's gold middle finger to the world popping bottles and then you see 
sixth place on the podium. Uh, if you look really close, the Mets logo says lol. Um, <laughs> but uh, sixth place. But you know what? Sixth place is is first. You know what I mean? Like there was a race after the after this podium. There was another race. That's the postseason. So good for the Phillies. Love the Rocky and Drago meme. We talked about uh, Philly versus San Diego. Rocky way better than uh, Pete Mitchell from uh, from Top Gun. So you got Rocky Balboa representing the Phils and Ivan Drago representing the Houston Astros. And then finally, although I've learned that this isn't exactly true, I think it's probably how we all feel. A map of how the United States feels about this World Series. Pretty much every place loves the Phillies, and you have only the city of Houston pulling for the Houston Astros. I feel like that's that's more accurate. I feel like that's pretty accurate. Yeah, for sure. It, the only people I feel like who aren't from Houston who are maybe pulling for the Astros a little more are people who are like, oh, Dusty Baker needs the ring. Sure. And 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 you probably have a little of those in every city. Yeah. But not a, not a majority. Not a, not a majority. People. Not right. a majority. They're a minority. I did, did see a more literal uh, adaptation of that map. And it showed Colorado as as being Astros territory. That doesn't make sense to it me. It does not make sense. No. At all. I mean, kind of, if you just go, well, people from Texas are moving to Colorado, but I don't, I legit have not met a, in my decade here in Colorado. Anyone from Texas? I, I, I'm I sure know it's some happened. people from Texas. My friend Alex is from Texas, but she's not an Astros fan. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that does uh, kind of puzzle me just a little bit there. Um, doesn't make sense. Um, I think their numbers are off, and that other map that I think we don't we don't have it loaded in the show, do we? No, not the no. not the uh, the more accurate one. I think I think everyone's heart is going for Philly, even though there might be data to suggest there's a couple. In New Mexico pulling for the Astros. Hey, that's close enough to Houston again. You got Albuquerque's own Alex Bregman there uh, from the Astros, but still, for the most part, uh, if you were going to do an electoral college of the states. Yes, uh, the Phillies has been have been elected as uh, our president of the World Series, so uh, that's where everyone's music uh, to my ears. Uh, that's where everyone's heart and head is is at. But if your pins and aces are anywhere other on the golf course than with pins and aces, a wonderful Colorado company, uh, you're doing something wrong because they've got the good stuff. Uh, Family owned golf and apparel business company right here in Colorado. Man, they are uh, they are our golf partner here at DNVR. They make polos, hats, golf bags. Uh, even a favorite uh, beer sleeve. They've got a bunch of different types too, depending on uh, the size of the can uh, and what specifically you're drinking so you can get that. You also need to act a little bit quickly too because yeah, uh, you're going to get 15% off your first order and free shipping uh, when you use code DNVR, but they come up with so many very specific and unique caps like an orange and navy one for the Broncos. Uh, I don't think they have a, a purple one yet for the Rockies, uh, and if they have in the past, it's sold out. So you do have to act quick. Head over to pinsandaces.com again to receive 15% off your first order and free shipping with code DNVR. You can go to athleticgreens.com slash ROC, the first three letters of Rockies. So you can get a wonderful bag, and in that bag is a scooper. And in each scoop is 75 high-quality vitamins, whole food swords, Sourced superfoods, probiotics, minerals, adaptogens, which super producer Kale loves. That's why he's long been known as Adaptogen Sorbo. Big in on adaptogens, but recently Susie has been in on adaptogens as well. Yeah, I can't stop talking about adaptogens. Now that I know what they do. The adaptogens duo. That's what's up. I like that. Patrick, you should get in on adaptogens. They make you feel phenomenal. Oh, I know. Because I use it every single look day. Look how phenomenal Ooh, he feels. It's fan- I, I love it. I need a little bit of everything. I, I don't pick my favorite. They're, they're all my uh, 75 different children. Uh, I, I've been very active on the vitamin front. Uh, but there are, there are 75 high quality children. I love them all. I need them all. It's how I start my day. Uh, I've been doing it for six months now. And uh, it's been great for my gut health. Balances me out. I'm really excited to not feel awful during the holiday season where, you know, you have fun with your eating, but that can also, you know, kind of, you know, uh, put a hurting on your gut health mm-hmm. at times. Not if you start your day this way. Uh, so uh, we swear by it here. You can get a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Again, when you go to athleticgreens.com slash ROC to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Game one. Five 
no, 6.03. 603. Mountain Standard Time. Aranola versus, it's probably going to be Justin Verlander. I don't think they've officially announced it yet. It's not official yet? Not officially mm-hmm. official, but I think we all know it's going to be. Oof. 39-year-old Justin Verlander. Susie, take a guess. How many 39-year-olds have started a game in the World Series? How many would you um, guess? I don't think it's a lot. I want to say it's in the teens. I would have said before I researched this, six. The answer is 16. I was shocked by that. That feels like a lot. Uh, Zach Wheeler penciled in there uh, for game two. Don't know what's going on with Houston. But uh, let's break these two teams down. How'd they get here? 106 wins for the Houston Astros to win the NL West by 16 games uh, ahead of uh, second place Seattle. Second most wins in franchise history uh, by 107 wins in 2019. It's their fourth time in the last five full seasons winning 100 games or more. Damn. And fifth time winning the AL West in the last six seasons. That that's is pretty ag- darn good for any division. That's aggressive. That is aggressive. That's very aggressive. They're the top seed, of course, in the American League, so they got a first round bye. Three game sweep of the fifth seed Mariners, four game sweep of the two seed Yankees. Also aggressive. Seven and zero in this postseason, hoping to become only the second team in MLB history to go through the entire postseason undefeated. Only team in the divisional era to do that in the 1976 Cincinnati Reds, the Big Red Machine. Are they your more favorite big red machine, or is it uh, the wrestler Kane, who is? I don't. You know, I don't know who that is. Or is it uh, also Justin Vernon's side project, Big Red Machine, who frequent collaborator with Taylor Swift <laughs> from Bonnie Vare? I gave you an out there. I think you're going to go with that one, and that's okay. Uh, now, in the wild card era. Since 1995, uh, only two teams have ever been undefeated going into the World Series. Did not bode well for them. Uh, last time was the uh, 2014 Kansas City Royals. Uh, they uh, they got beaten by the San Francisco Bumgarners. That was Madison Bumgarner's yeah. year where he was dominant. But the first team to ever enter the World Series uh, undefeated in the wild card era, our Colorado Rockies. This is such a painful thing to bring up for Rockies fans. <laughs> Yo, this got me on a rant the other day. Yeah, like yeah. hardcore. I went on a rant for like 25 minutes about the Rockies because Phil, because Susie brought up that they were the undefeated team going into the World Series, and I was like so sad. Yep. Yeah. Well, today, and again, this is going to kind of make us sad. Um, 15th anniversary of the first game, World Series game ever in Denver. Yeah, they, they lost. But, again, there was a period of time where, man, there was this hope. was the spot. There was hope. There was hope. There On this morning, 15 years ago, there was hope. This was the last day this of the hope. This was the last day. Because, you go, it's 3-0 against the Red Sox. They're really freaking good. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, not great. Yeah. Sorry to anybody who had tickets for Game 5 of that series. Uh, but, yeah, Astros looking to uh, to become the first so they're they they're trying to trying to buck that trend in general. Secret to their success, uh, well, if they need Jose Altuve, that could be problematic because he has not been very good. Mm-hmm. Or if Altuve decides he wants to do too much, uh, he there's a, a play I, I think it was in Game Four where uh, he was dancing off third base too much. Uh, unfortunate double play there. Anthony Rizzo thrown over to third base. Uh, so he kind of got picked off, uh, essentially. Uh, that's not good. He can't be doing too much. I don't think Altuve will do that again. Um, he's got three hits over the last two games, but we know before that, just complete over. So he's three for 32 so far this postseason, still hitting in the top of Dusty Baker's lineup. Not great. Uh, Alex Bregman needs to stay hot. Uh, he was five for 15 in both rounds. How about that for uh, uniformity? So uh, he needs to continue to do those kind of things. He had a double in both uh, the division series and the league championship series, a home run in the division series and league championship series. So uh, he's been super consistent. And they're going to lose the World Series if Justin Verlander, the regular, if the World Series Justin Verlander shows up. Not the regular season Justin Verlander, but the World Series Justin Verlander shows up because this isn't his first rodeo I'm gonna knock, knock on wood, on wood my drink and knock over <laughs> a drink now is that good luck i don't you gotta throw some salt somebody get her some salt we need one, salt i poured one out for the homies you poured one out but why would you knock for justin verlander 
Or are you to, knocking... For him to be World Series Justin Verlander. Ah, oh, you, you know your stuff. You know your stats, Susie, because in uh, all of the rounds of the postseason, 3.04 ERA in 159.2 innings. He's basically played like a whole season in the postseason. That's how much he's been there. Yeah. Uh, been to the uh, World Series. This will be his fourth time. He went twice with the Tigers. Uh, now his second time with the Astros. But in the World Series, in 38 innings, He's got a 5.68 ERA, nearly Oof. double, nearly double. If that guy shows up, that could be a problem for the Houston Astros. And that's where I think game one is the game you really want to go after mm-hmm. and win and feel good before you go back to Philly for games three, four, and five. And you know what else? I mean, biggest ball aside, can't wait to see what Kate Upton wears. <laughs> okay. Can't wait to see what she wears. I love her. I love that girl. I hope she's talking smack about Philly too. I'm like, I'll take it. She does back him up. She which does. I love that. Yeah, she's I so do supportive. Like that. Uh, I, I do like that. That's very good. Uh, Philly, <laughs> here's something uh, that I learned. Entering this season, Susie, mm-hmm. all 29 teams, well, not all, because all would be 30, but 29 of the 30 teams had made the postseason at some point since 1995. Via the wild card. Hmm. The only team to never win the, uh, a wild card, the Philadelphia Phillies. No. And they do it this year as the first ever sixth seed. And here no they are. No way. That's going to the World crazy. Series. That's kind of crazy. I think that's kind of crazy. Year of destiny over here. Also uh, entering the season, Gene Segura had played in the most games in MLB without reaching the postseason. He's now played in 11 years, uh, 11 seasons, 1,328 games. He will now uh, be off the schneid there. Who is second? I don't know. Great question, though, Susie. Now, how'd they get there? <laughs> 87 wins. Uh, third. That's right. Third place. This will be the first time, to my knowledge, third place team uh, is in the World Series. They're 14 games back of Atlanta. Sixth best record in the National League. They won the wild card round with consecutive wins in St. Louis, including that improbable game one comeback. I think the Cardinals were like 93-0, and I think, uh, leading by two runs or more in the eighth Not inning in the anymore. postseason. <laughs> yeah, uh, unbelievable comeback there. Uh, they defeated the two-seed Atlanta in the division series in four games. They took out the five-seed Padres in the championship series in four games, or no, five games for that one as well. Um, but yes, I feel like they're, they've got a lot of vibes to what Atlanta was like last year which Atlanta, we know, they beat the Astros. Mm -hmm. Um, Almost maybe even similar vibes to the Nationals in 2019, who also came out of the NL East and beat the Astros. NL Um, East is the best division. Houston, yes, has uh, has an issue with East teams in the past, so uh, it's hard to know which way to go. But they got 87 wins this year. Atlanta had only 88 last year. Uh, This will be the third fewest amount of uh, wins for a World Series winner, should Philadelphia win. Uh, only four times before this had a team ever gone to the World Series with less than 87 wins. 73 Mets, only 182. And the 97 Cleveland Guardians, as they were known at that time, I think, right? <laughs> you can just retroactively call them that. The only one, the 86 Cleveland games, baseball team. <laughs> the Cleveland baseballers, uh, they, lo- they uh, had won less than 87 games. They lost the World Series, but two teams actually have won the World Series with less than 87 wins. The 1987 Twins, they only won 85, but of course, the 2006 St. Louis Cardinals is the one everybody cites. Only 83 wins, fewest in MLB history for a winner. So, you know, they wouldn't be in totally rare company. It has been done before. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. How do they win? Don't suck on defense. Obviously, that is a huge one. Yeah. Uh, they've, they had some moments there. Uh, game three, it seemed like every, every ball that was hit Gene Segura's way, he either made a diving grab that was a web gem or he was making an error or botching a double play, whatever it was. The ball will find you. <laughs> you, you, really get, you really get all or nothing with these Phillies sometimes. <laughs> Very true. They just have to not suck. They can just be okay. They need to continue to slug and they need to continue to be sassy. They got to be the Phillies that Keith Hernandez <laughs> would approve of. They have and to And have be, them good fundies. They got to have some good fundies. Very much. Yeah, they they got to be sassy. The fans need to continue to give middle fingers to people from uh, that are out of town reporters. 
I'm I'm ready. I, I'm warming up my. I'm doing my finger stretches right now as we speak. There you go. But you are going to be giving middle fingers yeah. to HSTN, our sister station, <laughs> our sister company. Oh wait, no, we don't. We don't have an HSTN Astros yet. <laughs> yet. Wink. Wink. Um. Uh, yeah, I will. I will. I think it's it's expected. It's one hundred percent expected. I think it is. I think it is. Susie, we had a, a fun time doing a home run derby draft. We might as well do it again. I think we should do it again. Do do uh, do winners? You know, it depends winners on winners get on, first on street pick. Ball. You go street ball rules. I'm okay. going street ball rules. You're gonna go first again. Uh, here's the thing. Let's pick five guys. Got to have two, at least two from every team. So you are gonna be at forced two from to pick two Astros, Susie. Got to do it. I hate these rules. Or I mean, you can. We live in America. If you want, the if land you, of freedom. If you want to punt and take orbit, I can't stop you. <laughs> or Dusty Baker, I can't stop you. You just can't have more than three Phillies. Okay, fine. So you you get the first grab, and already I feel like I'm going to lose this again. Okay, well, because the first pick is going to be the best pick. First pick has to be Kyle Schwarber. He is mashing this postseason, and I don't think he's going to cool down. So I'm going with Kyle Schwarber. I couldn't agree more. That's that's where I would have gone. For my first pick, I I gotta stay I gotta stay with the Phillies here. Bryce Harper. It's gonna be hard for him to go back to back on MVPs, but he's got the power stroke right now. So I'll take him with my first pick and with my second pick. I gotta go with Jordan Alvarez. That was my DraftKings Sportsbook pick of the week earlier on Monday as the World Series MVP. So he is gonna be my guy for the second pick. Nice. Um, I am going Reese Hoskins for my second pick. Again, going back to the well. It worked last time. It worked. La- uh, you know what? I'm not going to mess with the formula. These guys are hot. These guys are having fun. Has to be Reese Hoskins. Um, okay. So now who do I pick? Now you're thinking. Now this is the strategy. You go, oh, crap. You know what? I may need the help of a Houston Astro somewhere along I'm the gonna way. I'm going to get my Houston Astro out of the way. Okay. And go with Jeremy Pena. Ooh. Because he's also a guy who is, you know, he's a rookie. He's young. He seems like he's having a lot of fun. MVP of the ALCS. I think I think he'll get me a couple of points. He's I had a couple he big doesn't. home runs. I hope he doesn't. But if I have to pick one, I guess it's him. He, uh, yeah, either he hits in some kind of Astros blowout or Phillies blowout where it's inconsequential. He does have some big postseason home runs already. Uh, I like that pick a lot. I'm going to go with uh, Kyle Tucker there, mm-hmm. who uh, homered during the regular season uh, once every 18 at-bats. Did also have 30 home runs. Uh, he's one of four guys on these two clubs uh, to hit more than 30 this year, or 30 or more this year, Schwarber, Alvarez, Tucker, and Hoskins. So I'll go ahead and take Kyle Tucker. Uh, with my fourth pick, uh, I feel like I need to take a Philly here to, to somehow block you in a general <laughs> roundabout way. Uh, and so I will. I, I got to take JT Ramuto. I talked about him during the regular season. Loved and really enjoyed watching Jacob Tyler Ramuto play this year. I love JT Ramuto. So I'm going to go JT Ramuto with it. my third pick. Damn it. In the draft. Okay. All right. The fourth pick, I should say. All right. So I got the... I think you got the... You got the yeah, your last two. I'm last two. two. More. Okay. I am going to go with... Um, okay, I'm going to pick Alec Bohm. Now, he, he did. Got, he let me down last series. He with did. With Zilch homers. But so maybe he's, he's due. due. I think he's uh, due. Every player is either <laughs> hot or due. Or <laughs> so... There's no in between. There's no in between. No in between. Okay, I am going to go with... Have to pick an astro now, don't I? Hmm. Orbit and Dusty Baker are out there. Zero home runs for both of those I, sentient beings. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Chaz McCormick. Ooh, Chaz Kane. Charles Cobb McCormick. <laughs> not his name. Not now, his name. Uh, I forgot to mention this earlier. He's from Lancaster County. D- does uh, I think he's from Millersville? Is that a place that uh, resonates at all? Not, re- I mean, if it's too far outside, it's of Philly, like an it's hour and a half, really I think, resonate. out of Philly, Millersville. So he probably grew up a Phillies fan, but Lancaster County person there. Mm-hmm. So 
You didn't know that. And you didn't know that. I didn't so know that. No, I good. actually did not. All right, final pick. I will go ahead and take Alex Bregman. I feel like he's a little bit overdue there. Uh, Jose Altuve hit more home runs than Alex Bregman during the season, but uh, Altuve has been really bad. And frankly, um, I, I don't want him on my team. I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't need that energy. No. I mean, maybe he's saving some of his electronic devices to use oh my during gosh. the World Series. <laughs> what are those electronic <laughs> devices? Uh, we have our theories. Again, you might have to come down to the DNVR bar at 6 o'clock. Do you remember the theory that was posited in September? Which theory? Well, uh, We talked to some baseball people and... Oh, how you stop communicate. It. Oh my gosh. Again, it's not suitable for the show. Members only discord <laughs> or come down to the bar uh, at six for the unofficial. I tried really hard to forget that. Global baseball set uh, going down at six o'clock. The game with one Susie. party. It'll follow the Susie show. I may or may not have a man named Dusty Baker on the show tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. There's a there's like a Dusty Baker Park I think in like the San Diego area, I think that's almost like a common name. I don't know why or how, but so there's gonna be a person. There may be a person there. May there. be a person named Dusty Baker on the podcast tomorrow. Okay, interesting. No, uh, I talked to so there's a reporter in California named Dusty Baker who was named after Dusty Baker. But oh, that's he, awesome. But he and the manager Dusty Dusty Baker like have a very special connection. He's known Dusty Baker since he was four months old. That's pretty cool. So we I got like some that. good stories. That's going to be good. And it's going to be good for the SEO too. Yes. <laughs> it's going to work. Yes. It, it doesn't matter. That's it. I like that. Um, there are so many really good bets right now on DraftKings Sportsbook. It's, I, I was overwhelmed and mm -hmm. not in a bad way. I was just excited. My brain was just lighting up. Um, players to record one or more home runs. So we know in the Philly series, only eight guys homered. You can take the over, so 10 and a half, more than 10 and a half guys to homer, mm -hmm. plus 350. So that means you're just kind of spreading it out just a little bit. Interesting. That would be every, all our guys that we drafted, and then one more. If you want to go under, that's 450. Or, because eight was the magic number in the Philly series, you could bet the over under on eight and a half, over eight and a half, minus 135. So that seems to be pretty good odds uh, hmm. that that's going to happen. Or under plus 110 so if we if we have a run back of what we saw in the nlcs that's not bad at plus 110 that's fun uh you can also bet on uh, a player who could record a hit in every game of the world series if you were to pick someone like kyle schwarber who's gonna have the most opportunities he's in lead off mm -hmm. and he's uh he's his team is starting off on the road mm -hmm. uh, for the first two games plus 2000 if you think kyle schwarber is gonna get just a hit every game plus 2000 oh this is for a hundred dollar bet this makes things very interesting. 20 to 1 odds right there on that. Uh, they also have something cool. You can do head-to-head uh, -head homers. There's three different matchups, which are great. My favorite is Jose Altuve versus Reese Hoskins. Ooh. That actually sounds easy. That one's kind of easy money, uh, but they've got a couple more of those. You can just bet on game one home runs. Uh, if a guy's going to hit it, so Reese Hoskins, he's plus 425 to homer. So, again, a $100 bet wins you 425 or a dollar bet wins you... Four dollars and twenty-five cents. Four to one odds hmm. for Reese Hoskins to homer. I like those odds. Those are great odds. Uh, you can bet on stolen bases. I don't think there's going to be a ton in this World Series, so don't expect to go down to Taco Bell to steal a base, steal a taco. Uh, Pete Davidson's going to be. <laughs> Pete Davidson uh, is going to look uh, very disappointed. He is going to. <laughs> Yeah. The new face of Taco Bell, Pete Davidson. The best brand pairing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he's going to look like uh, Nathan for you um, behind home plate at the Mets series. <laughs> because it's like, no <laughs> no one's getting any tacos. I got to stay here for the entire game. Just steal a base early. Uh, you might want to bet on Kyle Tucker. Yeah, I know I just picked him for the home run derby. Uh, 25 stolen bases this year, most uh, between the two teams. Mm -hmm. Steal a base in game one, plus 600. Again, 6 to 1 odds. On that, you can even bet on the exact score for game one. Ooh. And if you nail that, you win some serious money. Susie, what do you think the final score for game one is going to be? I don't want to tip your hand I don't know. just yet. Oh, man. Okay. I think it's going to be 5-4 Phillies. Okay. Phillies to win 5-4. If you were to get... That correct score on DraftKings Sportsbook, $2,200. Plus 
plus 2200 for five four fills. I might as well. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's really good. Uh, I like that. Uh, who do you got as your MVP of this series? I already said it was Jordan Alvarez. Sorry, I like the money line on that. Mm. Is Harper I mean, going back to back? Is it going to be Hoskins this time? Is it going to be somebody new? I think it's either going to be Harper or Hoskins. So not Schwarber. I don't know. It's going to be tough. These guys are cooking. I think Schwarber would be, if I if I had a, a second pick, Schwarber would be my guy. I'm going with Reese Hoskins. I like He's that. Due. <laughs> He's due for an MVP. These two teams are very well matched offensively, pitching wise. Got to give the edge to Houston, I think. But the uh, the real question everybody wants to know, will we see Orbit and the Fanatic together? I don't think we will. I don't think we will either, I don't think we will. I don't think they're... they're we should have seen them by now. They're not down to collab. They're enemies right now. They're not going to play nice with one another. We're not going to see them together. The collaborate... We know the answer to this one. Which guy is saying no? Or which which sentient entity? I don't... They're not guys necessarily. They're, they're beings. They're not human beings. Who's saying no I think at, at a collab? They're both saying no. No, I disagree. Uh, you know what? I bet Orbit would love some of the fanatic magic. You, so you're saying the fanatic would say no at a collab? Yeah. I go the opposite. I think Orbit would be afraid to get in the same ring as the fanatic. Orbit cannot hang with the fanatic. No, no, no. How oh, am I the true. one saying this? I Well, I just think that the fanatic knows he's better than everyone else. Yeah. He doesn't need a collab with Orbit. Oh, doesn't need to. He no. doesn't need to. That's true. I'll he's say not going to waste his time. The guy, uh, I read that the guy who played Yuppie. Do you know, do you know who Yuppie is? No. Uh, Yuppie it was the mascot of the Montreal Expos. Oh, and I think okay. he's like the unofficial mascot of the Montreal Canadiens now. Um, <laughs> but the guy who played Yuppie said, I think the Philly Fanatic interacts more with people as opposed to Orbit, who's just more with his little numbers and routines on the field. So I liked it. I was like, yeah, that's true. The Fanatic, Fanatic is very a, much in, uh, interacts a, with people. A great improver. The, yes. Just like so talented. Best in the game. Best in the game. Number one. So we'll see if the uh, the best mascot wins you the most games here in the global baseball set. Oh no, we could say World Series. Your on thing the is podcast, that. on we the pod. Can say okay. World Series. Oh, that's we right. We can't use it to promote events. No, because we can't make money off of that. We can't make money off of it. No, not Which allowed. We're not doing that. We're not. I mean, I I'm not making because Susie's off of having it. an unauthorized. Game one. Global. Big baseball watch party. It's a big Big game. baseball watch party. <laughs> <laughs> BBWP? A I like big global baseball, baseball watch set. party. Global baseball set. Yeah, it doesn't have a good. I do like BBWP better a little bit. My big baseball watch party. The graphic says Susie's big baseball watch party. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know it was officially branded as BBWP. <laughs> That's on me. That's I my thought, bad, I thought people. you retweeted it. Get out of here. No, I did. I, I loved it. I just didn't know it had an official, unofficial, unauthorized name. I thought we were going to rebrand it with Global Baseball Set. But big baseball watch party going down tomorrow, Friday, at 6 o'clock, of course. Uh, Susie Show at, at 5 p.m. Five. Live on DNVR Rockies or, or DNVR Sports Channel here on YouTube. You can listen to the podcast, but I think you want to watch this one just like you want to watch this and you get to see my legs. I am actually wearing shorts. <laughs> they are just like. Tone, get, some skin tone color you're getting kind of dragged match. on twitter right now am i yeah a little bit some people are supporting you but oh my god I, you're being ridiculous right now am i with these legs look I, when you got it you got it Thigh uh, guy fall over here so uh make sure you follow us on twitter <laughs> <laughs> at tnvr ready for the show to be over at dnvr underscore rockies at patrick d lines is where i'm at on twitter you can find me at the Susie hunter on all platforms this has been wonderful but you know what they say about momentum? What do they say? It's only as good as your next show. So we'll see you tomorrow at 5.